We see in Isaiah 61, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to do, to do. What is the anointing on your life? The anointing on your life is the enablement of God. The anointing will break the yoke, not your gifts, first of all, not your abilities, not your strengths, not your opinion, not, not everything that you know, but the anointing will break the yoke. Now, what on earth is the anointing? We see Jesus, when he came to earth in the beginning of his ministry, he opened the word and read from the book Isaiah, and he said, and he read specifically these few verses, and he said, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. That he came for his mandate. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. Who? Me? Jesus Christ. Amen? The spirit of the Lord, sovereign Lord, is on the son, Jesus Christ. Who sent? God the Father sent the spirit to be on the son. Father, son, Holy Spirit involved with this mandate. It's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Hello? And that anointing, that anointing can be on you. How? Only in Christ Jesus, because the Father sent the Spirit on the Son. Where can you find your anointing? Only in the Son. Because the Father has anointed the Son. The Son will build His church. The Son will build His church. Hello? I'm the Christ, the Son of the living God. And on that revelation in you and in me, Christ will build His church. Amen. But the revelation must become a reality. The revelation of who He is. There is nothing for me to do. There is no mandate. There is no job. There is no calling. Except, first of all, to be found in Him. Let's say, me to be found in him. That is the essence of your life, the essence of your destiny, to be found in him. Christ means the anointed one, the anointed one. Your anointing is in the anointed one. Because the Holy Spirit cannot rest on you when it's just flesh, when it's sin, when it's all that what is wrong, then the fire will be there. And consume us, it cannot be. But I have only one right to have the Holy Spirit, the anointing on me, and that is in Christ. Now we see also, for those who are writing down, in Ephesians we see, our life is hidden in Christ. So you have a life hidden in the hurt, hidden in the circumstances, hidden in the disability, hidden in the lack where I can focus so much on the, the certain lacks, the, the, the lack in my life. We can so focus on the disappointments or the success. I'm a success and I find myself in the success. No, no, no. I must find myself in Christ. When the excellence came through and God blessed Israel, Israel found themselves in the blessing and then their heart turned away from God. When it was rough, they ran to God and found themselves in Him. And then the breakthrough comes. Blessing can be the biggest curse on earth. But that's not. God does not that. It's not His heart for me and you. Hello. He wants to show Himself as an excellent Father. And blessing is not the raining down of dollars <laughs> on your life. Hello. Remember, we talked about that, the Beatitudes, and so many facets in the Bible. Go and look at the word blessing. And then he blessed them and said, blessed are those who, and then make your list of a hundred things that the word says. That is God's blessing on your life. And blessing is always for purpose. Let's say, blessing is always for purpose. Okay, you've written that down. I understand. Okay. If you don't understand blessing is for purpose, blessing will become a curse. 
Blessing will become a curse if you don't understand that blessing is for a purpose. Canaan will become a curse if you don't understand it is for a purpose. And you go into the blessing before the time with purpose. I find the purpose and then I go into the blessing. Hello? Purpose. Go therefore, make disciples of all the nations. Baptize them. Teach them to obey. And see. And see the blessing. And see the blessing. The essence of blessing. See, I am with you till the end. And when you are with him and you have him, you have everything. Are you with me? Hello? That's the essence. But find your purpose and you will see the blessing. God is there, and he's giving them this mandate, Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20. Hey? Mandate. There you go. All authority given to me in heaven and on earth, Jesus said. Therefore, because I have the final say, therefore, that means, because I have the final say, I'm the final authority, therefore, go. But you, my brother and my sister, can determine who will have the final authority. My reasoning that this is my personality. So God will not use me in that way. The reasoning that I cannot speak about Jesus. I will live it, but I'm not allowed to say. I'm not, cannot, not allowed to speak about Jesus. Okay. They will go to hell and remember that you had an excellent life. Because you never showed them the way. Jesus Christ. Where the name must be on your lips. Hello? Are you with me? Make sure you understand purpose. Because then you will see the blessing. But the blessing will serve the purpose. The purpose is not to obtain the blessing. Hello? So I receive Canaan, but Canaan must serve the purposes of God. God is not the trick. God is not the strategy to receive Canaan. Hello? God is involved in the beginning. God is involved in Canaan. And if there's something in the promises of God that I receive with God, I'm going over the Jordan with God. Amen. We mustn't go into that now, but okay. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, the Son, because the Father has anointed the Son to do, to do, to do. Now, when we talk about he anointed you, it's also the picture of when you see in the word, the hand of God is on you. When you hear and when you see in the word, it says the hand of God is on you. That means the father has put his spirit on you to do. We see Acts 1 verse 8. And you will receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you. When the hand of the father come upon you. And what? You will be my witnesses. You will understand purpose. You will understand purpose. So the Spirit came upon Jesus. He understood the purpose. And he went with the purpose. Spirit and word. Spirit and word. The two. First of all, my brother and sister, you became a child of God. What happened? Your spirit became reborn in a state of death on the way to hell. The Holy Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, came. And he gave the rebirth of your spirit, and you became a child of God. Amen? Spirit. Then we see the word says, we will worship the Father in spirit and truth. Spirit and truth. But now in our souls, we have some issues. And now, if in my soul, I have all this reasoning and all this stuff. And I keep on reasoning, I will find myself in a place where I talk the talk of some other spirit. And then the other spirit come to anoint me, to enable me to be more just in the reasoning about God. More in the, in the religion of God. More into my abilities, my strengths, my way of doing. And that spirit will anoint me. Because I'm here and I'm saying what I want because that demon has anointed me to be able to do that. That demon has enabled me to do it. 
But when I speak the truth more and more and more and more, I will see how the Holy Spirit has enabled me. How the hand of the Father has enabled me. And that is the anointing of God has enabled me. And it, the word says the anointing break the yoke. Hello? The anointing, remember, break the yoke. And Jesus says, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. But there's a life that you need to find. And the life is found in Christ Jesus. Because only in Christ Jesus, you can have the hand of the Father on you. You can have the Holy Spirit on you. And you can understand the anointing. And to flow with the anointing. And life could be so much, so much, so much, so much easier. With the anointing, break the yokes. The yoke. And God says, burden is light, yoke is easy. You will find rest for your soul. Soul will not strive to do. If you find yourself in Christ, because your life is, say again, hidden. Hidden in Christ. There's an excellent life. And you can go to heaven. And in heaven you can realize what an awesome life in Christ you could have had. Because that life will not be just given like this. It's given in Christ. You must go and find it. God doesn't say, here's the treasure. He says, here's the hidden treasure. <laughs> you with me? Here's the map. To find the hidden treasure. Are you with me? But your life is hidden. The excellent, eternal, quality life. Is hidden in Christ. Not for when you die, but for now. For now. For now. So I ask Holy Spirit through the word to open it up for you to find this hidden life in Christ. But if you don't push in to find it, you don't have to push to find another life. The enemy will push you into the other life. So otherwise, oh, it's either you push to find that hidden quality life in Christ, or the enemy, the circumstances, the emotions, what you go through, positive or negative, will push you. You don't have to push it. It will push you into a different type of life. Under the hand, under the anointing of a different type of spirit. Spirit of the world or whatever. You know, when somebody starts to get an attitude or to get a certain compromise... They just flow. Their words just flow. Everything is then bad. Everything. Whatever was good in the past is now bad. Boom. And they cannot see it a different way. Because that anointing of that thing enable them to, to have no perspective on the goodness of God in people. No perspective of what was good yesterday. It is nothing today. But that will not be like that anymore in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Because we're running to find our hidden, excellent, excellent life in Christ. Let's say, I will find an excellent life hidden in Christ. Through the Holy Spirit and the manual. The Word of God. Go and find it. I just want to say, Amen. But, oh, just for the sake of being together, let's talk further. Hey, praise the Lord. Because the Lord has anointed me. First of all, just write down these, these few. To proclaim, to proclaim the good news to the poor. Who's the poor? The one with, who has no money. No, no, no. The one, remember, the Beatitudes, Matthew 5. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who realize they are nothing without Christ. Bring the good news to those who know that they are nothing without Christ. That's people standing amazed about forgiveness. People standing amazed that because of God's grace. People standing amazed not to have all the answers. Knowing that without Christ, even though I know a lot, you know, I've seen a lot, I've seen success, I've seen this, I've seen that, I've tasted and see that the Lord is good, I better allow humility to protect me. 
You're going to write down, allow humility to protect you. Allow humility to protect you. Because my brother, my sister, the temptation is not when it's rough. The temptation is when things go good. When you think you have a lot of answers. And, some are, and a lot of those answers are correct. You have a lot of answers. It's very correct. You have an anointing. You have some gifts and it's excellent. But that can become such a curse if you don't stay humble at his feet. I'm supposed to speak later or next week about it, but there rose a generation after the generation of Joseph. No, I'm lying. Joshua. That also with Joseph, but Joseph, but another time. Joshua. Where they knew there was a generation, they knew the wonders of God, they spoke the wonders of God, they knew what he did in Egypt, they saw his hand. But after they died, the word says there rose a generation who didn't know God and what he has done. How did that happen? How was it possible that the generation who saw and experienced everything were not able to impart it to the next generation? And from there, everything started to go wrong with Israel. All the kings and a lot of Hamars and rubbish where Israel just went into a lot of rubbish. Generational impartation is so absolutely crucial. Otherwise, you can go from this one generation who saw everything. These amazing, amazing, amazing hand of God, the amazing hand of God working on them, with them, through them, against the enemy. And you find a generation, they didn't know God, and they didn't see his hand, and they didn't remember, heard about the hand of God. How is that possible? May God help you. You are called to proclaim the news, the good news. God's hand is on your life. And you better know why. You better respect the hand of the Father on your hand. Because it's there for a purpose. Otherwise, just look at me. It's time for this, for you to be taken. But he is not taking you to him in heaven. He's keeping you here. Because there's a purpose. There's a purpose. He has anointed you to do the following. So Jesus standing up, rising up, using this this prophecy, and say today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing, is to say, my Father's hand is upon me for a purpose. For a specific mandate. Specific mandate on your life. Respect the Father's hand on you, and then you will proclaim the good news. Not proclaim what you want to proclaim, because automatically other hands from demonic rubbish wants to have Want to have their hand on you. They want to touch your life. But they have nothing on you when you're in Christ Jesus. When you're focusing in Christ Jesus to find that awesome hidden life that is in Christ. To be revealed. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. They are in business. That's what we see Isaiah 61. But we see business also beginning of Isaiah where Father, Son, Holy Spirit spoke to one another and said, who, who will go for us? Who's, who's us? Father, Son, Holy Spirit, who will go for us? Isaiah heard it in the spirit. What's the conversation in heaven? And Isaiah says, I will go. Here I am. Lord, send me. He can be sent, but only in Christ Jesus. He can be sent because there's no mandate outside of Christ Jesus. No mandate. Whatever you do, make sure that your dreams, your, your work, what you do is not to get some bread on the table. What you do is because you found your mandate in Christ Jesus for life here on earth. Amen. So we see even the beginning. Let us make man in our image. Who? Father, Son, Holy Spirit, speaking to one another. They are together in business. 
Let us make man in our image, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Who will go for us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit? Then, Father, as anointed, His Son, Jesus, by what? By the, through the Holy Spirit, and in that way, hand of God is there. Because of the Holy Spirit's presence, therefore, Father's hand is on you. If it's not because, if Holy Spirit is not there, Father's hand is not upon you, but some other hand. But a hand is upon you. Some other hand today as we sit here. Respect his hand. Amen. Proclaim the good news to the poor. Not just talk about. Talk about is giving opinions. Proclaim there's authority. There's authority in your voice. It is shocking the, the impact of words. In the beginning, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But in the beginning was the Word. It's God. The Word was with God, the Son, who is the living Word. But He was also the Word. In the beginning, the Word was there. Hello? But nothing happened because Father, Son, Holy Spirit together in business. Holy Spirit is waiting for the living word to speak forth the word, who he is. And you will speak forth. And spirit, your words has spirit dimension. When you speak, something happens in the spirit realm. Let's say, when I speak, something happens. Something is shifting in the spirit dimension. Supposed to write it down and remember that. Okay. That is actually shocking. It's supposed to bring you to the point to make sure where the scripture says, be careful what you say. Oh, how you say it in English? Let your word in South the sprinkle this. Anybody? Somebody was speaking in tongues there, I think. I couldn't hear. Thank you very much. Okay. Word seasoned with salt. Okay. Put a God. Hello? Because this tongue can be lit up from hell. We can see the fire from hell through the tongue. Not first of all, the heart is lit up from hell, but the tongue. But the tongue. And you start to speak the words from hell, and your heart will come in line with your words. So that your word, the hell can live in your heart. Are you with me? No. You have a physical heart, doof, 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 yes. But then you have a heart, and you can play soccer with with your heart like with a soccer ball. Your heart, you agree with God's heart in your spirit. In your spirit, there's a fullness of God. The perfection is in your spirit. And you make sure that your heart is thinking what his heart is thinking. And that is when your heart is, is locked in with your spirit. But you can play soccer and play around with your heart. Flirt around with darkness. And put your heart in your emotions. This is what I feel. This is how I feel about stuff. I'm, I'm feeling depressed. And the reality of how you feel, that is where you put your heart. I must be honest. I give you a piece of my heart. This is how I feel. I'm frustrated or I'm tired or I'm this or I'm anxious. Or I'm... That's good. That's your emotions. Yes, that's reality. Don't lie. That's what you feel. But don't let your Heart find habitation there. Don't let your heart find a home in your emotions. That is shaky. Or your thought patterns. Or your own will that can be, most of the time, very good. Amen. <laughs> let your heart found, find his home with the fullness of God in your spirit. Don't play around with your heart. He actually gave it to Christ. Not true. Not your property to play around with. Your heart can be honest about certain things. But then from a place of honesty, go to the truth. Honesty, the place of humility, take the guts to be honest about your life. Remember, 
the old teaching, Mr. Joseph, Genesis 50 verse 20, you intended to harm me, my brothers, you intended to harm me, and you sold me as a slave, and I went through hardships, and I went through this, because of you. You can be honest about what happened, but then you take this away, this finger, and you take this hand, and you honor God. But God, but God had a plan for a nation to have food in a time of famine. Famine. That's why this happened. So I will honor his hand. But you cannot honor his hand in truth if your hand is doing this. Not just judging others, but judging yourself. Because this is going to boomerang. This is going to come back here. So I look at the right and wrong of situation. I cannot honor the truth. I cannot obey my God. I don't know where the snake had a finger. But in any case, he pointed the finger. And then Eve and Adam. And they looked at the right and wrong of the situation. At the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Of what is right, what is wrong. And when they started to do this. Did God indeed say that you're not allowed to do this? Is this not because he did that? Or is this not his motive? And from that place, they could take the fruit. Instead of, I don't know what you're talking about. And if that is now right or wrong, I honor God. That's it. The truth is, God said, I will not eat from this tree. So I will honor him, even though my mind doesn't understand. Are you with me? Are you with me? Hello? So he has sent me. First of all, anointed to proclaim the good news to the poor. Secondly, he has sent me to bind up the broken heart to bring healing. That's the second point. To bring healing to the heart. Everybody say healing to the heart. Okay. So you proclaim the message from heaven. Secondly, you bring healing to the heart. That is why God's hand is upon you. He wants you to bring healing through your prayer into nations. He wants you to bring healing to your own soul from your spirit. That you speak with a mandate that is in your spirit. You first speak to your soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Who's speaking to who? You are singing from your spirit, where you must worship him in spirit and truth. And you're speaking to your soul that is bound in a lot of facts and emotions and things. And you, with the truth and from your spirit, you are singing to your soul and you're telling your soul, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Another one, O oh my soul. You are not alone. How does that one go again? There's a God. No. All right, whatever. You can't remember that one. <laughs> I think he's uh, casting crowns. <laughs> okay. You will find so many songs where you're actually speaking to your soul. Where you are speaking to your soul. Where from? Where the song is actually giving you words to put in your spirit so that your spirit can speak and sing to your soul to come in line. Is it not David that said, Oh my soul, why are you so downcast? You are bringing the good news to your soul and bind up the broken heart. That what is broken in your soul. Why are you so downcast? Hope. Hope on God. He, you will praise him. You call your soul in line where? From your perfect spirit. Where God did a perfect work. Where the fullness of God is in your spirit. From that place you speak to your soul. No, I am this and I feel this and I feel this and I. Who's that I? Is it the I, the real you from your spirit? Or is that the I in your soul where soul is throwing a tantrum? I feel this and I feel this and I feel that. And I don't want to do this anymore. I feel this, 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 this. Therefore, I make a decision. Who? Soul is making a decision. Or spirit is making a decision. Say, I will praise the Lord. And I will call soul in line. To fall in line. So even though you are feeling downcast. Even though you are negative. Even though you are anxious. Even though you are, you will praise the Lord. Because you're not a baboon. I'm here. You are a spirit. 
not some other monkey baboon that has no spirit. Are you with me? You are anointed to proclaim the good news. Sent to bind up the brokenhearted. Number three, to proclaim freedom for the captives. Through your life, freedom must come. In your presence. Where you go, your presence in a place must bring freedom. Because your life must proclaim a message of freedom. Hello? So that when you open your mouth and you have the wisdom of God in your mouth, there's freedom, there's liberty, there's insight. Are you with me? You are called, anointed to do that. God's hand is on your life to do that. Next one, number four. Proclaim the release from darkness for the prisoners. Proclaim the release from darkness for the prisoners. And that is in your soul. Where your soul can be imprisoned by things where you don't see the light. Ideas, but the light of God is not in it. Good idea is in it. Very good principles found in your ideas, but not specifically the light of God. Because it wasn't the enlightenment from God. That specific job, that specific idea, that specific dream for that moment. And there could be a dream, but you put it out there, and it's not the timing. Then you put this dream that you received from God, and you put it in the darkness to die. Well, you will try and figure out what must happen, but it's not the time, it's not the season. So God will not give you the light about that dream. That is from God, not from hell. You leave it there, the promise of God. Hello? Hello? And when God says, this is the time, and you bring it there, you will bring it with light. Yoke, easy, burden, light. Anointing will be there, hand of God, on that dream, on that idea, on that strategy, for your finances, for your future. It will be there. Hello? But you must know that you take this godly dream, but you will not take it if it's not the timing. If you don't have the light of God in it, you will not abort it and mess it up. And missed the opportunity. No, not anymore in Jesus' name. Proclaim freedom for the captives. Proclaim the release from darkness for the prisoners. Then, next one, to proclaim. Next point, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Not just saying and praying God will bless you and you will be a blessing. Proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. You will be blessed. In Christ Jesus. And that you proclaim. That means you come with authority and you give the proclamation. The proclamation is because you have authority. You come with authority. When you open your mouth, there is authority. You open the mouth, your mouth, the favor of God will be there. Why? Because you have a certain lifestyle. You understand it in a dynamic that you, together with Father, Son, Holy Spirit, you are in business. And his hand is on you. His life is in you. You are in him because business needs to be done. His kingdom needs to come. His will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Work with him. Work with him. Be part of the team. Amen. That's the team you are in, first of all. So proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. That is now. It's not a year of 365 days. He's talking about the dimension. This is the season of his favor. That means his grace, his blessing is upon you. His favor upon you is the enablement is there. His favor is upon you. The doors will open up. But go with God and you will see how the doors will open up. His favor is upon you. Proclaim it. Proclaim it to others. Give them hope that they know the favor is there. But, first of all, they must receive the good news. They must pre take the healing for their hearts. Hello? They must be set free from the prison. They must be set free from all these things that binds them. Hello? For them taking the truth in spite of the facts. To proclaim the day of vengeance of our God. So that you can judge everyone. No, 
no, no, no, no. Proclaim the season where the fear of God must be on our lives. Where the fear of God must be on our lives. Proclaim the day of vengeance of our God. Not just only that day at the end of it all. For it is appointed unto man once to die, then the judgment, the word says. But even today, it is appointed unto man once to die, then the judgment. That is your body. But it's appointed unto man today for the flesh to die, and then the judgment on that flesh, so that I will not walk in that flesh anymore. So what I've done, what I'm doing in the flesh, God, show me, please, so that that rubbish can die, so that I can find my life in Christ. Hidden, but through the Holy Spirit, not anymore, revealed. How many times Paul talks about Life revealed in Christ. Blessings revealed in Christ. All that you need revealed in Christ. All of heaven revealed in Christ. Revealed, 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 revealed. Go and look with that one name. And you'll see how it's so utterly, intensely connected with Christ. A life hidden in Christ. Revealed in Christ. If you can learn how to focus on him. How to focus on him. And that is where Psalm 23 comes in. When darkness is out there, when the enemy is out there, when the, you must go through the valley of death where you see death and destruction, what is the essence? The proclamation, David says, I will fix my eyes on him and him alone. So I will let me tell you about my God. When this is happening, that's my God. When this is happening, that's my God. When that is happening, that's my God. He leads me to green pastures. I don't see it now, but I know my God. Whatever I need, he will take me there. Waters, yes, where I find rest. Even though if I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear nothing because he, because he, because he, because I know him. I have found my life in him in the midst of the valley of darkness valley of death. I find my life in him even though I'm laying in blessings, in green pastures. I'm just everywhere, green blessings and success. Him. Fresh water. Him. Lead me beside still waters. I have contentment. I have fulfillment. Still waters. Him. Hello. Hello. Enemy comes. I have a feast because the battle belongs to the Lord. Hello. Because he, because of him, I have a feast. Are you with me? What will follow me? Goodness and mercy. Not your past. In Christ, through the blood of Christ, dealt with, but an excellent future. May God help you. May God help me. So, to proclaim on the, Lord's, the year of the Lord's favor, but also, same time, the day of vengeance of our God. God is dealing with the enemy. Remember that, hey? God is dealing with the enemy. 666. Isaiah 66, verse 6. Serious, go and read, hey? That's the only 666 in the Bible that you find. <laughs> Isaiah 66, verse 6. God is dealing with the enemy. That is when you remember and will hear about that. That is what God is doing. He's dealing with the enemy. Ah, hallelujah. Okay. And then the last one, number seven. To comfort all who mourn and provide. That's one point. For those who grieve in Zion. To bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes. Oil of joy instead of mourning. Garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. Of, heaven, of heaviness. To provide for those in Zion. A comfort. Comfort for those in Zion. For those who mourn. That means not moan and groan. That means those who come in true, with true repentance to Zion. Zion, the place where God is honored. I come into the place where God is honored because I want him to be honored through my life. In spite of what I feel, in spite of despair, in spite of negativity, in spite of whatever, God provides for me comfort. Where? If I come with true repentance and humility into the place where he is honored. Through the healing he brings in you, he wants to be honored. When you are healed, 
you will know how to honor him. Not for the sake of finding something or getting something, but just for the privilege to honor him. He wants to bring healing so that you will know how to honor him in the midst of your enemy. In the midst of your success. That can become the biggest curse in your life. If humility will not protect you in the midst of your success, in the midst of your that provision, in the midst of all the things that are just flowing. In that place, humility must protect you. Amen. Because in humility you stay, even in the facts of success, so that humility will always draw, in, draw you into the truth that you are nothing without him. And that what you have there is because of his grace. That's true. And he will lift you up to have authority because in authority you will proclaim. You will not talk about. Talk about the stuff. Too many times, too much talking about stuff. Too little proclaiming with truth. Because when you open your mouth and things happen in the spirit world, if you like it or not, you can go, oh, talk about whatever. Things happening in the spirit realm over your life. Even when you have blah, blah. Everybody do this. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now when the one talking rub is next to you, next time you just tell him blah, blah, blah. Don't take offense then. <laughs> okay. Are you with me? Thinks what must happen in the spirit when you speak the truth. Truth will not return void to Jesus Christ, to God. Hello? It will accomplish what it was sent for. If you know the will of God is to send forth this truth in that direction, then you speak the truth in that direction because you know it's the will of God that there this must happen. And it will come to pass. Holy Spirit hovering over the waters. Until, 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 until. God opens his mouth and said, and said, let there be light. And boom! There was light. The Spirit will hover over your life. The Spirit will be faithful to the mandate of Christ. The Spirit will be faithful because the Father sent the Spirit to you. Because he wants to confirm that the hand of the Father is upon your life. Your, his hand will be there till you die. But you will ignore it or you will respect it by yielding to him. His hand will be there. And as soon as you speak according to the Father's will, the hand of God that is faithful to the voice of God will accomplish what was set by the Father will happen by the hand of the Father, the Holy Spirit. Let's say what was set by the Father will happen through the hand of the Father in my life. But stay in truth. Push to find the hidden life in Christ, the living word. You better know this vocabulary. Otherwise, you cannot understand. He will be speaking to you. He will be speaking to you. But you will not understand the word. Because he's speaking Chinese. Sometimes it sounds like they're chewing the chappy. That they are speaking Chinese. Hi. You can hear his voice, but you don't understand what he, God is saying to you. Because you don't know the vocabulary. There's no shortcut for learning his vocabulary. Get into the word. Come to know the language. And you will understand. Not just you hear the voice, but you will understand what he is saying. I see what he is saying. Everybody, I see what he is saying. May that happen. That is what Habakkuk said in the midst of his very intimidating circumstances. So at the end of the day, to provide for those who grieve in Zion, who come with brokenness to the place where he's honored. To bestow on them the crown of beauty instead of ashes. Instead of ashes. My brother, my sister, you're going for a landing. Okay. Ashes. Let everything be burnt away while it's not from God. And even if you feel you are burnt up. No, maybe it's a lot of rubbish in your soul burnt up. 
God will not make you burn up. When you're a child of God, yes, you are safe from the fire of hell. But the fire of heaven will be there to burn away everything that's rubbish. There's a fire for your benefit. There's a fire for destruction. You allow, allow the fire of destruction through Allah and Achachas in your life, or you allow, allow the fire of God. But at the end of the day, the ashes that's left from that place, through God's comfort, beauty will rise up. When you surrender, even that, what you feel, is totally burned. Nothing is there. It's, there's no life. There's evidence of death. The evidence, the evidence of death is the ashes that's left. From that place, from the evidence of death, God will bring forth the beauty of life. Let's say the beauty of life will be seen through me after the evidence of death. Oh, may there be evidence of death in you and me. The death of our flesh. Well, good ideas, but not God ideas. Are you with me? Find faith. Find the hope. Find the hope. Find the comfort. Find the comfort. Provide it in Zion. Provide it in the place where he alone is honored. Zion. And you will see his beauty. Beauty for ashes. You will live in the beauty of God. You will live a beautiful life. You will see the beauty in life. That's your comfort. Secondly, oil of joy instead of mourning. Mourning, mourning. Not moaning and groaning. That is negativity and judgment and tempting, testing God. No. Mourning in the sense of gentle brokenness before him. And in that place of brokenness, in that place of humility, looking at the facts and, and saying, yes, God, in all honesty, this is what I feel. This is what's going on. God, in all honesty, I want to slaughter that guy. But I come and say, forgive me, because this is not according to your heart, according to your love, according to your forgiveness, according to your blood. I come into the place in Christ where I will find my life. Hello? Are you still here? But I come with joy because I know my God has forgiven me. I find joy in the cross. I can boast in the cross. So what are we talking about? Two, oil of joy instead of mourning. The oil, it will just flow. Oil will flow. Even today with the engines, the oil will flow. Those days they had no engines, so the picture does not make sense. Would not make sense in that time. But the oil, talks it's flowing. It's bringing a flow. The anointing breaks the yoke. It will just flow. The flow in your life, that what will cause the flow, that everything is streamlined, is the joy. It's the joy. That you will stay excited about life because God is excited about your life. And you choose not to say, God, I don't agree with your emotion about my life. You must change your emotions about my life, please. Thank you. <laughs> no, it will not happen. God is excited about your future. God has a joy over you. And in his joy, you find your strength. Not in the joy or in your emotions, because your joy in your emotions, now it's there, now it's gone. Now it's there, now it's gone. Now it's there. You have this personality, it's just positive all the time, and this just bubbling personality. And you find another personality, just half empty glass. The other one, half full. This guy, look at the reality, it's half empty. Oh, yes, very good attitude. But at the end of the day, you need to see what God is seeing. Hello? And in his joy, you find strength. God is excited, God is cheering you on. And he wants to give that to you when you come. With mourning, with a thing of, I lay down, without you I'm nothing, but with your joy I have strength. God is providing that in Zion. You will not have it until you come into the place of, I want to come into the place where God alone is honored. And that when that becomes a passion, doesn't matter if I feel hell in my life, doesn't matter the frustration, doesn't matter what. I choose to come to the place where God is honored. 
if I feel like doing it or not. I come into this place. And there you will have, you will find the beauty from ashes. The joy instead of the mourning. Amen. And lastly, the garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. Spirit of despair. I have no energy for anything. But you can take on, put on the garment of praise. You can put on a garment and say, I use this opportunity. It cannot go any worse in my life. This is the worst. And it cannot go worse. And because this is the, 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 maybe the last time that it will be so bad in my life, I just want to use this opportunity to praise my God. So um, I just want to make sure that I will praise my God in this opportunity where I feel it cannot go worse. It cannot be worse in my life. So jump into the final opportunity for eternity, maybe, in your life to decide, take on the garment of praise, where I say, I honor you, doesn't matter what I feel. I will honor you, I will respect you. It's not just your joy and excitement over me. It's not just beautiful life from ashes. It's opportunity to honor in the midst of despair. In the midst of despair. Make you a total different person. How on earth? Hand of God. Holy Spirit. Gives you the anointing. Yoke's broken. Because the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit is in business. And your life is in Christ so that you are in the same business than Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God, come and help us to be in the same business, not in an agenda from hell. Not business with the spirit or demon of bitterness or judgment or the flesh or personality or performance or my weakness or my strengths, my success or my failures. No, 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 I'm not in that business anymore, Lord. I pray for every man, woman, that we all together as a unity will run to you to run to find this hidden life in Christ. Give us the grace, God, the courage in the Holy Spirit to run for such a life. I pray that each one here will see that excellent future that you have for them in Christ Jesus. They will not hold back, creating each one of us a hunger to run into that what you have for our lives. Lord, help us to be protected against good ideas instead of your ideas, Lord. Because sometimes your ideas for our soul, souls doesn't always look very good, Lord. Forgive us for that. But help us not to first form the opinion about your will and your ideas, Lord, for our lives. But give us the grace to have the faith to go with you. We want to know you. We want to know you. Not first to evaluate you about green pastures and valleys of death and the enemy, Lord. In the presence of whoever, we want to know you. I pray for that hunger in every man and woman that you will open the eyes of our hearts as we choose to put our heart with what you've placed in our spirit and not with turmoils in souls. We honor you for that, that you come and do that. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And in that name alone. Amen. Give me two minutes, 14 seconds. So at the end of the day, it says, all of this so that you will be an oak of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. So that in Christ, you found your life. In Christ, you are rooted in the word, rooted in him. You draw your life from him, from his word and from who he is. Not from if he put you, if he placed you in the desert, that's okay. Because this does not, desert does not determine who you are. And people in the desert look at you and say, where on earth? You know the Oka, Okavango Delta that is in Botswana that comes from what river? It's not the Nile. It's uh, somebody with urge rights kind of read Adrix Kandahat. Nobody can tell us. Come, Niku. How come I don't find Nobody. Okay, in any case, if the river of life is flowing in, oasis you will be. 
oasis you will be, even if it's in the heat and the devastating and intimidating situation or circumstances like middle of Botswana. And those like that uh, movie, Beautiful People, you, those who, it's way before your time. In any case, where they say they, that there's all these baboons and elephants and all these guys, they're living there, but they are so unaware of the destruction and the intimidating situation, desert and sun out there. Just two kilometers further. There. But they don't even know it exists because they're living in this oasis. The reality of the oasis. And so you must become an oasis where God is planting you, where God is putting you. That people so, they are so consumed, they are so arrested by the, by the oasis, your life. That they can look beyond what is out there. And they can find life through your life. Where God is placing me, I will be in an oasis. In Jesus' name. I will bring freshness. Okay, because you're a planting of the Lord for the display of His splendor. Let's say, I'm a planting of the Lord for the display of His splendor. In Jesus' name. You take that? I mean, just give yourself a hug and say, I'm a planting of the Lord. Now say that with attitude. I'm a planting of the Lord for the display of His splendor. Okay. May you utterly be blessed. Hallelujah.